I'm here with Brittany again. We are doing the version two of the cookbook, Cooking with Evernote. Is that the name? <laughs> well, that's the name of our cooking show, Vlad. <laughs> Coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. Uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, our, our, uh, our Evernote as a recipe book. Okay, that's a good one. So you had new ideas from the last from the last one? I did. Uh, you know, some of them were inspired by you and so many of your incredible YouTube videos, uh, which I Thank watch you. on the regular and learn so much. I love the way your brain thinks. It's very different <laughs> than the way mine thinks. And that's helpful. Um, but uh, some of it was that and some of it was uh, the comments on your video from your subscribers and your listeners. Uh, you know, giving some feedback that uh -huh. made me think, uh, you know, this, our first video was about Evernote and, and how it can be used as a cookbook. And a lot of people really liked the ideas, but couldn't really sacrifice their full Evernote account dedicated to 100% recipes. How can we integrate some of these ideas into uh, other workflows <laughs> or uh -huh. other different home boards, you know, like where I can't have my home 100% dedicated to recipes, but I could have it, uh, you know, as a filtered notes widget or a pinned note or something like that. So, yeah, I have a couple of ideas in mind that I include I myself on that list. I loved your cookbook, but I need my Evernote home for other things. <laughs> hey, I mean, and and this was this was a very advanced cookbook. Yes. Uh, the way that it was originally set up. Uh, I don't even have it personally. So all of those recipes were my recipes <laughs> okay. um, from my own personal account. They're in this like demo account right now, but um, I just have them in a notebook okay. in my own account. Uh, okay. So it's definitely not dedicated 100% on my home. Uh, so, but, but there are a couple of things, meal planning and, and things like that. So one of the things that, you know, made that, original recipe book so powerful was we talked a lot about leveraging the filtered notes as almost like a, a, a stay in place search. Okay. So, you know, when we're searching up here for, you know, our chicken noodle soup, this search will eventually go away. You know, when I X out of the mm -hmm. search or I go back to home, I don't get to see yes. those notes anymore. Mm -hmm. So the ability to kind of get to see this search long term is super helpful. I have um, this set up right now to show me all of the recipes, the notes that I have tagged with chicken. Okay. So this is this is my chicken recipes right now because that was what I was um, uh, researching. You can also see I've started to add a little bit more work oriented things to this home board. So I do have a filtered notes widget set up with my weekly recurring tasks, Okay. Uh, which you can see are showing up here in my task bar. And that is alongside my weekly meal plan in my calendar. So there's a big mix of, is this work? Is this recipes only? It strikes a balance that you know, might help some of your uh, subscribers try to integrate a little bit more of these techniques into their own Evernote account. I like that. That's more a uh, real life approach, right? Absolutely. I, I always like, uh, you know, going for like the, the perfect Evernote, you know, <laughs> but there, but the reality is, is that, uh, you know, there's as many ways to use Evernote as there are Evernote users. And what I love about this is, you know, there are people out there that only exclusively have an Evernote recipe account or only exclusively use Evernote uh, for work only. That's true. Yeah, but that's the reality true. is, is that the majority of us blur all of it together. I mean, yeah, my personal Evernote account is just a hodgepodge of everything from vacations to recipes to my therapy notes, <laughs> all of the above. I think this is a good way to balance that home mm -hmm. board while still getting to leverage this widget. I, this is really powerful. You know, when you're going in and you're making uh, a meal plan, for example, being able to expand on um, your filters in this one widget and keep it kind of close at hand to me is really valuable. I think I really like searching from the filtered notes widget more than I like searching from search. Yeah, because it's easier, right? You have all the options there. Just select the ones you want and 
that's it. And you can definitely get very, um, like these are my two recipes that have both chicken and basil in them. Okay. So this is in the note, whatever that word is inside the note, we are, we mm -hmm. are filtering by that word that is written Correct. in some place. So we have tag chicken and the keyword inside the note. Okay. You can even take that a step further because remember, we have all the recipes that are um, organized by their, uh, their recipe type. Is it breakfast? Okay. Is it dessert? Is it dinner, lunch? Um, so when I filtered by recipes that have are tagged chicken and basil for dinner, uh, I have no results found. So the um, note, the notebook structure and tags you kept from the last, the last idea. I did, I did, okay. yeah. The, I think that this still helps okay. it be really versatile, um, and and it adds an extra layer of organization. You know, some people just want the notebook, some people just want the tags. You can kind of do both, which is really cool. Here's my next big idea. <laughs> uh, in a previous video that we did. Uh, I was going over my recipe note and you asked me about how I would make the uh, grocery list. And, you know, really what I kind of had in mind at the time was I would take these recipes and, you know, go down the ingredient list and whatever I didn't have, I would just add to the scratch pad or add to my grocery list note. Um, but then I got to thinking, what would that look like to incorporate tasks? So go with me here for a second. I'm on the desktop and um, a really cool feature is that you can turn a bulleted list into a task. Let's say I am gonna make this recipe and I need chicken. I can actually just select anything. I could just even put my cursor here on this line. And if I use the keyboard shortcut, Command T, it turns this into a task. Okay, I'm following. I hope everybody's following. And and just to make it clear, it doesn't need to be the shortcut. We can use any any type of task you can use, command. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yep, you can use here this uh, this little shortcut here in your editor toolbar, or you can even do it from the insert menu as well. I like the keyboard shortcut uh, personally. Okay, so. I need chicken, probably some more uh, chicken stock, and probably some kale. Okay. Okay. So, but everything else I have. Okay. Maybe thinking, okay, yeah, but now that's going to be all mixed into how mm -hmm. how is that going to be effective, right? I came up with this idea based on one of your videos about tasks and subtasks and and different ways in which we can filter and organize tasks. So I thought, well, if this is me building a grocery list without having to copy and paste into a grocery list note, I want to make it a task, but I don't want them to be all jumbled up with all of my other work tasks. So I can use a keyword at the beginning of my task Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say, you know, grocery. Um, this will be my keyword. And I'm going to put that in front of the ingredients that I want to buy at the store. Okay. And another reason I really like this technique as well is I get to the store and I immediately forget how much chicken I need. Uh, I'll be oh. standing there and I had just put ground chicken, but I don't know if I need one pound or two pounds or whatever. Okay. And so... I really like incorporating the exact ingredient amount here into this uh, list. Check this out. I'm going to find tasks that are tagged grocery. And I have a grocery list that I didn't even have to make because I'm just sitting here looking through the recipe I'm already going to make. I'm already here in this recipe. I just need to make sure I know I have everything I need. This is just like tagging a task. Correct. <laughs> You, just you could even it. take this a step further, um, which, you know, I, I haven't really played with this before, but let's see how this uh -huh. goes. Uh, you know, like this would maybe be something I would buy at the grocery store, but maybe I want to buy chicken stock at Costco um, or like a, a bulk oh. wholesale store. Uh -huh. So 
I could even separate my tasks based on my my place that I'm going to shop yes. at. Yes. So when I'm at Costco, I filter my tasks by Costco. And when I'm at the grocery store, I filter my tasks by grocery. And now I'm walking around and I say, oh, I need one bunch of kale and one You know exactly what you, what you need. Mm -hmm. and, it can and, get interesting when you have, um, so let's say you have uh, a couple of recipes and two of them call for ground chicken. So you won't have one task for ground chicken, you'll have two. There is a little bit of, mm -hmm. you know, room for error or, you know, having to like do duplicate work here in the grocery store. Like, okay, here, here's another recipe that calls for ground chicken. So I can make this a task. Um, now, when we go back to our task list, uh, uh, you can see it shows up twice and they're not necessarily next to each other. I have an idea now. Maybe some people don't use the flags. So maybe a lot of people use them, but some people don't. So putting together your your ideas, maybe let's say the flag mm. is the item that I have to buy and that little tag that I invented is the store. So then I can go flag plus store and filter by both. Oh, instead, of gro instead of grocery, it, it will be the name of the store. Ah, okay. Okay, so I can I can I can combine the flag with the mm -hmm. store name, and then I I know what I what I have to to do on that on that store. Or if I want to just check the the ingredients, I just use the flag. So one of the other things that I have found really nice about this method is that when I go back in to uh, you know let's say I'm going back in to make this recipe now, um, and and I have. I've purchased everything that I need, right? So there, okay. all of these tasks are marked off. Mm -hmm. um, if I just delete this, it, go, I am it goes back. back. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have to do a whole lot extra. And this is a lot less copy paste mm -hmm. to create a whole separate individual ch like checklist, grocery list for the store. Mm -hmm. I am just leveraging my existing note with my full ingredient list and turning those ingredients into my grocery list and leveraging the filter to do the work for me versus having to build my own list. Your idea is better than 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 my idea because I I <laughs> Yeah, it's it's we we are we are putting everything. Wait, we're to... we're recording this, right? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> My idea is better. I'm gonna so, hold on to that. <laughs> <laughs> because I use the the check boxes as yeah. items that I have to to purchase, but I then have to go inside the note to check the items. You don't even need to go there. You just go to the tasks and the items will be there. In my case, I add a buy tag to that note so I can filter mm. by buy. And then I, I can oh. see the note, but even then I have to go inside the note. I have to open the note Each and check. Different the, note. Yes, and, and, and yeah. maybe it's not, it's not, it's never all the items. We have, we have some items at home, so it's not gonna be, so I'll have to, to look at each one and say, oh, this is the one. Okay, this one is, is not selected. In your case, it doesn't matter if I'm buying all the items or just some. All I, all I need to buy it's in the in the in the in the tasks. Um, so one one very important thing to note is when you're in your task view, uh, obviously if you click on it, it pulls up this whole modal. So if I purchase this chicken. It's important to mark the task complete, not delete the task. Deleting the task would delete the line from the ingredient. And so that's the simplicity of just leveraging this view altogether because I could just mark it complete from the view and never have to open up the task view, never have to open up the note or anything. And then when I go to make this recipe, I'm already here and I can just, you know, very simply reformat that ingredient into a list again. I like it. Really better. I'm into this keyword thing. I, you know, so I was talking to another Evernote expert that um, she uses emojis at uh -huh. the front 
of her tasks to visually indicate and be able to filter by the emoji. So like mm -hmm. a red heart is a priority one, a yellow heart a priority two, mm. a purple heart is a personal task, a green heart is a work task. I think those are some really interesting ideas and ways in which you can leverage the capabilities of Evernote's search to make tasks even more powerful. I use them with the, the birthdays and, and, and my yeah. anniversary, but it's hard to search because when, when you're looking for an item, just say grocery, it's, oh, yeah. what, what's the emoji I used for that and the I store? I think it's easier on when I'm searching on the phone to search for an emoji. Oh, yeah. Versus like on the, on the desktop. But I love the visual indicators they add to uh, notes, tasks, calendar events. It, it definitely helps draw my eye to certain trends and themes and, and levels of importance that I personally have said. So I think emojis is an interesting way to do it if that works for you. Keywords is another really cool way to do it. Sure, you could okay. also do just like GL, one word. Okay. Um, word. Yeah. Yeah. So And that way you don't even have to remember to do the quotation marks around <laughs> ground chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a new widget that is a multiple recipes widget. I like that idea. And you have the tasks as items to buy. Anything else? There might be some more later. Uh, we're working on some cool things <laughs> that I already have ideas on how to leverage in recipes. So maybe there will be a part three. Okay. <laughs> so we have to create that new channel, Cooking with Evernote. <laughs> Cooking with Evernote. Yeah, I'll, I'll wear my apron next time. <laughs> So we recorded that first video and then that person added that comment that we were using the entire home and I had that idea. I recorded a new video and now we are here. So I, I, I think yeah. that having these ideas and changing the way Evernote works because there's so many ways to do it and we can pick ideas from here and do mm -hmm. and use it in other things. It doesn't have to be a, a, a cookbook. Right. Yeah, I think the recipes is a really nice metaphor for almost anything. Uh -huh. uh, it, I, I like speaking in recipe language because everybody cooks. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, can understand the concept of, of cooking, baking, following a recipe, following a set of instructions, needing a set of supplies prior to. Uh, but like apply that to anything, it, you know, uh, you don't necessarily have to use Evernote as a recipe book to follow some of these tips. You could tag, you know, important tasks for different projects mm -hmm. with keywords. Yes. I like I like tagging it at the beginning of the task, but you could tag it anywhere in the task, really. And if you're filtering by that single keyword, you're going to find that very easily. Yes. Um, and, and And that might be a really great way to help people out there that are organizing maybe, you know, five or six different projects in mm -hmm. a single Evernote account. And you want to mm -hmm. use tasks, but you're like, Oh, I need to, you know, and you'll relate to this. I am, you know, working on many YouTube videos at a time. So when I put a task, create YouTube thumbnail, that's not very helpful for me when I'm working on like four different videos yes. that need thumbnails. So, you know, being able to like tag the video project that I'm working on. So I don't even have to see what note it's in. I can just filter. And that's really just the true power of, of Evernote. So, uh, I, I hope everyone gets a chance to try it and leave your feedback in the video we comments. Read it. <laughs> Believe it or not, we pay attention. We read them. <laughs> we read it and it gives us new ideas. I love it. Thank you for coming back. Of course. Thank you for having me back. Uh, and, and thanks for responding to my email. Let's do another video. I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you soon, Brittany. Bye-bye. See you soon.